body press and, you know, change uh, some of the other things, but kind of keeping the core idea around. And it's working out well for Michael as he's 10 and 1 here in LA. Let's start game one between Michael Zhang and Joseph Selmer. Chi Yu Tornet and Tornadus for Joseph compared to Chien Pao Zamazenta on Michael Zhang. Zama Center right away. That is going to be the defense boost with that Dauntless Shield, a way to already be able to put a lot of pressure over onto the opposing end of the field. That at has already happened, but can still damage some spread damage attack here, considering neither of the Pokemon would appreciate a hit going off on this turn. Both super effective, definitely feels good, and a little bit more accurate than you would be eyeing up for a Heat Wave in this situation. Being able to resist something and be immune to something like a Body Press could be great, but at the same time, you would then be susceptible to something like a Sucker Punch coming out from that Chien Pao. So you have to be so careful on where you're on going on forward. And I'm, as I'm looking at, at Joseph's team, you can really understand how fire-centric or sun-centric it really is. The Tornado says Sunny Day, Chiyu and Incineroar are two fire types that have that would love the drought, and that's really why Groudon is on the team. So we'll find out in this matchup how crucial Groudon can be. But not now, because Chiyu is going to translate into a ghost type here on turn one. Going to be really important. Depends on what Michael went for. Zamazenta is just going to play it safe, though. Yeah, make sure that you're not going to be taking this burning jealousy, not taking this burn, and not taking any damage on this turn. Only Pokemon that opts to protect as Tailwind comes on out. Burning jealousy, not a fan of what's going on here. I am jealous, and I am going to hit you so <laughs> hard for that, bringing Chien Pao down to Focus Sash. Yeah, that is 99% uh, of Chien Pao's uh, HP gone in a flash, but Ice School Crash does connect off to Tornadus. It's super effective. That is a one-hit KO. Tornadus does set the the uh, uh, the speed up there for the rest of the team, which Groudon, of course, is going to appreciate. But he has lost his Pokemon. Oh, that's okay. It's a Tornadus. You could you set the tail. Just get knocked out. I'm eyeing up the Fluttermane in the ground on the back, and these look so powerful going on forward. The Fluttermane, you do have to be a smidge careful since it definitely doesn't look the greatest going up against something like the Zamazenta if the Zamazenta is able to be holding on through that turn, through the barrage of hits coming out. But at the same time, the Flutter Mane can be off, putting a lot of offensive pressure into the opposing end. And this one, it is going to be the Choice, choice Specs variant, so it has access to a variety of moves, including a Dazzling Gleam that can actually just take care of the Chien Pao and do a good amount of damage into the Zamazenta. And since the Chiyu doesn't have any of the specs, it can be changing into a different move. You can eye up that overheat for the extra damage coming on out. And it's risky, but it might be the damage that you need. Yeah, the Fluttermane deciding what he wants to lock him to on Joseph's end. But Zamazenta in a really difficult spot facing down the fairy type Fluttermane because the, as you mentioned, fairy into Zamazenta is going to be pretty strong and you can't terrestrialize out of the weakness because Michael Zhang's uh, Zamazenta is Terra Dragon. So you'd still be very much threatened by the Fluttermane. Michael understands how precarious of a position the Zamazenta is in. So now it's time for Chandelor to swap in. I love this. The fire day move coming out. Well, it's going to take that so well. Chi Yu gets hit with a sucker punch, and that sucker's being brought down to one HP. Focus Slash going to be activating Moonblast into Chien Pao. It's going to be that final little bit of HP to take that down, making first AO there over onto Michael's end of the board. Now with the Chandelure hitting the field, the overheat targeted into the slot. That will be a flash fire. Yeah, that is actually going to mean that Chandler takes no damage whatsoever, and it boosts his fire attacks in the in the following turn. So now the Chandler, if it decides to click a, uh, a heat wave, it's going to be doing even more damage. Chien, Chi, or Chi, excuse me, down to one HP. Fluttermane's not going to appreciate that boosted fire damage either, and he gets Chandler on the field without taking damage. So that was an excellent switch. And at this point, too, the Chiyu just down to the one. There is still two more turns of um, Tailwind over on Joseph's end of the board. Fluttermane over on Michael's is the booster energy variety, and it is going to be that speed boost. and something to watch out for going on forward. The Chiyu does have the option of protecting past this turn, but the Fluttermane is going to be susceptible to anything that's going to be happening. And you've already used your terrestrialization, so you can't get out of that ghost-type weakness that you're going to have, which doesn't look good against either of these ghost-type Pokemon over on Michael's end. 
Yeah, Mo Moon Blast though from Joseph's Fundermain. Hits the opposing Fundermain, bring it down to around 10% HP. And it's going to be zero as the double target into that slot knocks out Fundermain before Michael can even get an attack this turn. It's up to the Heat Wave from Chandelure, but she dodges one HP and it's going to remain that way. Fundermain gets one hit KO'd, but she does not care about Heat Wave. The life orb chandelier so much damage, but the one little hit point of damage you needed in the Chi Yu, and that is going to be a huge miss. Still two Pokemon now for Ozub, and a swap coming out from Michael's end, also down. And do these Pokemon. That's going to be the sun coming on out, and that's going to be heat waves that are now boosted from this chandelier. One more turn of Tailwind remaining, too. Yeah, and I think Michael kind of uh, is fine with the when the Fluttermane took all that damage and got knocked out because you can likely anticipate Groudon was the fourth Pokemon. So if you have your opponent kind of helping boost your damage on your side with the Drought, you're, you're okay with that trade. Yeah, there is still the one turn, though. There is Protect over on the Chandelure as well as the Zamazenta. So you can just be protecting past this turn and then deal with things going on forward since there isn't really set up potential coming out from Joseph's end. This feels pretty safe. Zamazenta, it'll go ahead and protect. There's the double. Yeah, <laughs> Chandelor saying, no, I don't want to take any damage on this turn. Uh, Chiyu saying, count count your days, Chiyu, because you're just lucky to be here after the heat wave missed on the prior turn. Groudon opting for the Thunder Punch, but no damage. Uh, that's something that you don't see on every Groudon set, right? The Thunder Punch might be able to change certain matchups, but with the Tailwind petering out, now that Zamazenta is going to be moving faster. Yeah, the Thunder Punch, maybe not going to be stealing the same amount of damage, but it is going to be heaps more accurate than something like a Prestis Blades here at this point. Now Tailwind is done, and this Chiyu, you, you got to figure out what you want to be doing with it going on forward. And this is definitely a tough one coming on out, and the ground on definitely doesn't have too much speed over on its end, and since you have spent Trasalization, it still will be taking a lot of damage going on forward. Groudon is still full HP for Joseph, and it's uh, obviously this team composition, as we mentioned, how much it revolves around getting the sun up and trying to utilize Groudon. It's such an important Pokemon on his team. We'll see if Chi Yu and Groudon can pull this one back against the regional champion, but it's going to be tough now that Michael can terrestrialize. And that is going to be the Chandelure dropping that fire type, going into the grass type, making sure that, hey, if there is something that could press this blade's head in my way, well, it's going to be absolutely no problem. Since this one definitely isn't the speedy Pokemon coming on out. Ground on, protect this time around. And the Dark Pulse weakness, as well as a ghost type, you're able to get rid of that, uh, which you didn't take any damage anyway, since Zamazenta is easily able to clean up that Terra Ghost Chiyu with the 1 HP, thanks to Heavy Slam. Now it's Groudon taking no damage this turn, but still two full of Pokemon on Michaels and in a really strong spot and the drought kind of to his detriment because it, it could be boosting the uh, damage from Chandelure. Yeah, Groudon in this position definitely looks worthy of that participation award since coming out on here, the Chi Yu has definitely impressed me with the damage it was doing. The Fluttermain did a lot, but the Groudon hasn't really had an opportunity to do too much and accredited to how Michael was playing, the protects on the turn, making sure that the Groudon wasn't really enabled to be doing too much. And now that the Chandelier has terrestrialized, the Prestis Blade's not really the most threatening and you can't go with a heat crash into it because of that flash fire. Joseph kind of reading the room here, understanding this match. Potential change, because you would have gotten the sun on that turn. Well, Joseph's going to try to adjust here in game two, and it's going to be a tough task with Zamazenta Fluttermane on Michael's end compared to a double fire type lead with Chi Yu and Incineroar. And looking at this, you do have the potential fake out into the Zamazenta. Intimidate, sure, it's going to negate something like a heavy slam, but the body press not really going to matter. And offhand, I am just seeing two Pokemon over on Michael's end of the board that can go ahead and protect and get rid of that fake out. You do have pressure going on forward from that turn though, since even if there is the protect just on this turn coming on out, this Incineroar, something we didn't necessarily talk about, does have the Will-O-Wisp. And that is something that you could try and fire off into the Zamazenta to be cutting the amount of damage it does output for the rest of the match. And I'm looking at, you know, Michael's Pokemon are crazy fast right now. Zamazenta, a very traditionally very speedy Pokemon. Fluttermane has the speed boost from the booster energy activating. So Tornadus is not on the field. We get the uh, the ability to see it's in the back for, for Joseph. So for at least this turn and until Joseph can get Tornadus on the field safely, Michael Zang's Pokemon are going to be moving really fast. All right, well... 
We're going to be going for a swap to be kicking things off. And it's going to be Chi Yu taking away the Beads of Ruin. So the Flutter main over on Michael's end does a little bit of less. And this will be a ground on that comes in and sets the sun. Since it was a booster energy over on the other end, you're not further setting up the Flutter main over on Michael's end, which is definitely nice. But here's Trasalization into the grass type for the Incineroar. Terror Grass here on Incineroar. Let's see if Michael was prepared for this option. There's a lot of damage. You can think about the fake outs. You can think about parting shot switch, switches or anything, but Michael is just playing it safe with a protect on this turn. Flutter Man does not protect, though. It's the Thunder Wave into Groudon, who, as the name would suggest, is a ground type immune to Thunder Wave. There's the Sun Boosted Flare Blitz. One hit KO, Flutter Man is down. What a Pokemon to get rid of off the bat here in this game, too. A nice little chunk of recoil, but being able to set up the sun, we had talked about the Fluttermane, we had talked about the Chi Yu, but the damage from the Flare Blitz as well, another Pokemon that can be enabled. Now the Chandelure, that will be a swap in, so no more fire type attacks into that slot. Just so nice. And the ground on swapping as well to make sure the Thunder Wave couldn't be affecting anything, slowing anything from Joseph's end down even further was really, really nice to see. Notably, Joseph still doesn't have speed going on in this turn since the Groudon isn't necessarily the fastest, though it should be outspeeding the Chandelure here. But you do have to worry about the Zamazenta from Michael Zen. That's the one that I'm eyeing up as a way to potentially be dealing a lot of damage. So the Incineroar can definitely threaten that in a lot of ways as well. Yeah, especially with the sun, you're essentially uh, you're essentially giving Incineroar extra damage. Imagine it has a higher attack stat than it already does because the sun is up, boosting the damage of Flare Blitz. Body press from Zamazenta will go towards Groudon's Protect here. So Joseph decided to keep that Groudon nice and healthy. Here is the sun boosted heat wave from the Chandelure. It's not going to hit. Connect. The ground on, but will it connect into the grass type Incineroar? Yes, it does. Wow. You don't see that too often. Incineroar getting knocked out from a fire attack, but when he turned into a grass type, that's a lot of damage. And that is going to be saving the Zamazenta from being the victim. Maybe a very powerful flare blitz on this. Now, Chiyu coming on out to swap in and can still be pressuring with a powerful fire type attack into this Zamazenta. We haven't seen terrestrialization come out, Michael. This Amazenta does have an ability to be resisting that since it is the dragon type terrestrialization here. So if you are worried about fire types being targeted into that slot, that is definitely a way that you can be getting around it since looking at a couple of these different moves, it wouldn't be super effective damage and you would be avoiding being hit super effective by a Christmas Blades as well. The other option, Chandelure, Terror Grass with Flash Fire, it's, it's kind of a perfect option for him because you resist you resist Precipice Blades if you turn into Grass type, you're immune to Fire Punch, and you would resist the Thunder Punch as well. That means Groudon really can't damage Chandelure if you Terrasalize. It's what Pokemon you're prioritizing on your own end of the field to get through the rest of this match. And Zamazenta has been eared out as the key or something you want to be staying safe through these next couple of turns. Dragon type Terrasalization, you are now going to be resisting the fire, water, grass, core, chandelure, protect in a different way with an actual protect. And it does make a lot of sense to go to the dragon typing while the sun is up. You're going to be taking boosted damage from it there. Brings to you down to its focus sash. So to you, uh, to you did stick around for quite a number of turns last game at 1 HP. So who knows how long Joseph can keep it on the field here. Dark Pulse goes into the protect there. And the Precipice Blades is not the most accurate move in the world. So we'll see if it does connect. Yes, Joseph to get it to hit into the Zamazenta, but he's so tanky on that <laughs> defensive side, it hardly does anything. This is being just a normal hit as well. The defense rate is the natural defense the Zamazenta has. I mean, it's just making this ground not look too great. And you can't, can't go Fire Punch or Thunder Punch either. So Preston's okay. Place is your best option. And at this point, too, the Zamazenta still just offers so much pressure, already hitting a body press into the Chiyu to bring it down to Sash. And Joseph, I think we eyed up that it was the Tornadus in the back, which, if that is going to be the final Pokemon left in this, is not really something that offers too much damage potential. It's something that would be nicer to hit the field sooner rather than later to get the speed so you can be pressuring. Now, no protects on the turn. Chiyu is done. Zamazenta gets that KO, just the 1 HP remaining, and he picks it up. So now Joseph's down to his final two Pokemon. Groudon with the Precipice Blades does connect onto both, gets the knockout onto Chandelure, so no more shenanigans 
from the Chandelure this time around to Michael, but Damazenta is definitely uh, perfectly okay taking as many Precipice Blades as he wants to throw at him. At least, like, that's more like it. That's still more the damage output that I want to see coming out from the ground on. And with the Chiyu going down, Tornadus hits the field. You have the option of now setting the Tailwind, getting the speed on your end, and Xian Pao over on Michael's end would not appreciate a Precipice Blades either. It does have Sash, so it will be sticking on through one of these turns. And double hit into the ground on is definitely something that it would not appreciate too much going on forward <laughs> anyways. The Chien Pao, that is going to be the sort of ruin to lower defenses of other Pokemon. So it would be helping then, Joseph, trying to chip away <laughs> a little bit more at the Zamazenta because the damage output that he's been hitting into that Pokemon so far has not really been doing the most out here. And we can see from, from Joseph's POV here that he's, he's kind of wavering back and forth on what to do because these turns are so <laughs> crucial. There's not a lot of room for error when you get to moments like this with not uh, a lot of Pokemon remaining in the matchup. High School Crash goes into Tornadus' Protect on this turn, so now Tornadus is not going to get knocked out. We'll be able to stick around the next turn. Here's a plus one body oh, wow. press. Hits a ground on just like 75%, but Heat Crash in the sun will bring Chien Pao down to its sash. Michael's okay with that trade because any turn you target Chien Pao, that means Zamazenta is not getting targeted. The Zamazenta not targeted, Chien Pao down to one, but the amount of damage done into the ground on the Chien Pao can kind of go for whatever it wants at this point. If you think the ground on is again going to be going on to the offensive here, a sucker punch into that is a definitely way to be cleaning that up. The Tornadus, if it wants to go for a bleak when to pick off that last little bit of HP on the Chien Pao, if you do go for the protect with the ground on here, if the Chien Pao calls, it goes for Icicle Crash, well, all of a sudden you have the ground on against the world in an unwinnable match when you're facing down against the shield dog over on the opposing end of the field. So there's a couple of different mind games going on for this. Surely you do lose without the speed on your end, and it would be a chance to try and hit something. But if it comes down to the press display's accuracy, that also feels bad. Yeah, this is certainly the turn that Joseph is Ooh, going to need to come back in his guard. favor. Wide guard is Michael is anticipating a precipice blaze, but as we saw, a thunder punch was locked in. It doesn't matter anyway because Chien Pao sucker punches the ground on. Michael kind of covering both of his bases that turn. Tornadus clicks tailwind, but to what end? As none of the Pokemon are remaining, the teammates for Tornadus are all gone. And at this point, too, with the Bleak Windstorm being the only attacking move from the Tornadus and a wide guard over on the other end, there is nothing this thing can do at this point. Yeah, you see the, you see the forfeit locked in, and Michael Zhang and his trusty Zamazenta get their 11th victory of the weekend here in L.A.